today I'm gonna to be showing you how to upgrade the thermostat on your immersion heater. If you've got economy seven, economy 10, or even a normal system, this is gonna be amazing by upgrading it with this T-Smart from Tesla. We're going to unbox the new Tesla T-Smart immersion heater, having a look at its versatile, snazzy, interchangeable feature with current immersion heaters before installing it here at the studio so I can fully demonstrate its functions, downloading and checking out the app that comes with it before going to my own home and fitting this up in my glorious loft. Right then, let's see what we're dealing with. So what do we get in the box? Well, we've got a lovely standard immersion heater shaped box here that I'm sure you're expecting to see, but it's kind of modern, a lot more modern than the, the packaging that I'd usually expect to get with an immersion heater, like the old brown sort of parcel box that you get. Um, and it gives you a good idea about what you're gonna be getting on here. So that we're gonna be using an app, but we'll also be able to use this on an interface on the front of the immersion. And it says on here, the smart hot water cylinder thermostat. So, I mean, for someone like me, who's had to install certain types of controllers on council properties where they've got economy seven, and you guys are gonna know the controller I'm on about, okay? The learned ones out there. It's a controller that is not great, I don't like it. These days with everyone with a mobile phone, if they're young or even if they're elderly, they're gonna be able to use this product uh, with or without a mobile phone, but have that extra connectivity and that extra control. So we've got a standard immersion here. This is the 14 inch by one and three quarter inch inlet. That is for this thread here but Tesla also make a whole range of different sizes for these. Um, but the main bit on it, the main bit that's new for you guys and the bit that's really exciting for me is this end cap. And one thing I wanna say, before we go anywhere further with this video, number one, we can twist this end cap off by lining up these two arrows and then popping it off like that. We can then take off the end piece by unplugging that connection wire. We can then undo this little nut just here, pop that to one side, take that off. And then this will pop out. And that means this, that you can retrofit these on existing immersion heaters. And that's what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna show you number one how to do it on this immersion behind us. And then I'm gonna install it in my own home. So let's start installing it and I'll show you the cool features that come with it right now. Here we go. Look after it guys, put it back in box. So for the studio demonstration, I'm gonna be showing you a retrofit type job on this tank here. I'm gonna fill it up with water. Earlier, I showed you the full immersion heater as well, just so you got an idea of what you'd get if you did buy the whole thing. No immersion heaters were wasted in the making of this video. Then I'm gonna to forget to take the plastic cap off the top and then start spraying water all over the studio. But don't worry guys, I've got it filled up with water, so the immersion is now fully covered and we can do a proper demonstration. Best laid plans. Right, so this is now filled up to about here and we've got just a cap on the cold inlet there. So we know we can do a nice little test. There's a tiny little bit of a weep on it actually. How could there be a weepy weep? So what do we need to do first to change over one of these? Firstly, we make sure to the best of our ability that we've isolated the immersion heater electrically. That means switching it off on the wall. If you can find a fuse, pulling that out and even better, a third level of protection, finding the distribution board and turning off the trip to the immersion heater. We'll then remove the cover of the old immersion heater and using a multimeter or electrical tester, test to make sure that we've actually isolated the electrical supply across the earth, live and neutral. Okay, that's great. Once that's done, we can safely remove the terminals for the neutral and the live using a little screwdriver just like that. Should be able to just pull them out of the way. When I do the changeover at my home, we're gonna use some lovely crimps to make this a really neat install. Now it's the simple task of pulling out the old thermostat and inserting the new Tesla T-Smart thermostat. When you're pushing the T-Smart stat back in, make sure you're careful with the control wire. Now all we need to do is reinstall our neutral and our live wires, making sure they're nice and tight before feeding the control wire through the new Tesla T-Smart spacer, popping the stud through the multiple holes so there's loads of different positions for you to choose from. So this will fit on loads of different types of immersion heater, lightly tightening up the nut. I just wanna show you as well that that control wire is not pinched under there. It's got free movement, so it's not gonna get damaged. And then we do what I showed you earlier on in the video. We plug the control wire back in, then line up our two arrows, push down and twist into position. And there you go, that's the install process complete. All you need to do now is reinstate the electrics and watch this little baby light up. So then guys, there you go. You see how easy that is to install there and the control that we now have over our water. And another little thing 
that people haven't really thought about when it comes to installing one of these. It's also a monitor for the temperature of the tank. You can then accurately keep an eye on the temperature of the tank from your phone, even if you're using a boiler, an external boiler to heat it up, which is gonna be common in the UK. But it still has the great advantages for someone who's got like an Economy 7 or an Economy 10 system. Suddenly, we've got a timer all in one on this beast here. So we can switch the T-Smart on and off by using the power button. The 20 degrees C is our current target temperature. The 15 degrees C is the current water temperature. The zap in the bottom left hand corner means that the immersion heater is calling for heat and heating up our hot water. The middle box is the current mode that we're on and the bottom right hand corner is our current Wi-Fi status which is not connected but we'll be doing that in a minute. There are five different operating modes. Manual will allow you to set a desired water temperature between 10 and 70 degrees C using the plus and minus buttons on the right hand side. Eco will keep the water temperature at 55 degrees C. Smart mode enables the water heater to learn your hot water consumption habits and adjust the water heating to your needs. This means that hot water is available when you need it, but you'll also make energy savings. Timer mode allows us to program the water heater in line with our needs. The water temperature can be set hourly, daily and weekly and saved as a personalised plan just like you'd normally expect. We do this via the mobile app and I'll be showing you how to do that in a minute. And finally there's travel mode that sets the water temperature to 10 degrees to prevent freezing. There's a couple of background functions that I think you'd like to know as well. Number one, it's anti-legionella. The anti-legionella is a built-in function and operates in the background. If the heater does not reach 60 degrees C for 15 days in a row, the anti-legionella cycle will be launched automatically and the water will be heated to 60 degrees for 30 minutes. Also, you've got frost protection on there, which I'm sure you realize is if the tank temperature gets low because you've gone away or something like that, it will come on and heat the tank up, preventing it from freezing. Also, and I'll go into the app in a minute, you can have one app with multiple devices like this. So if you're a landlord, if you've got four or five properties, you can see if they've got a problem with their hot water, if a tenant should ring you up, so it's handy for that. And also if you're a plumber and you've got a load of customers, it's quite handy to have all them on there as well. There's also a smart function so it can actually learn from your water usage itself and then set up timings on its own automatically to best suit your kind of lifestyle. Let's get the app downloaded and get that sorted out so you can see that now. Here we go. So pop over to the App Store or wherever you get your apps, search for T-Smart and then download and install it onto your mobile device. Pop back to your Wi-Fi and join the Tesla Wi-Fi network being emitted by the immersion heater. Once you've done that, you'll be able to go into the app and you'll see that the Tesla Tesla is there in the list. As you can see, this one needs an update, so just click the update button now. Also, you'll notice while we're doing that firmware update that the Wi-Fi thing on here has changed colour now. That's because we're connected to it on our phone and we're talking to it and getting it all set up. Once you've done that, you can click to go into the immersion heater where you'll see this page here and you can actually start controlling it right now. But now I can turn it off. I can turn it on, look how quick that is. We've got the actual current temperature of the water here at 22 degrees. And then we've got the set point that we've got at 15. If I want to change that up to 55, boom, there we go, it's 55. I can set that to manual, eco, smart, timer, or travel. We can set it to smart. If we set it to smart, it will record our usage for the next seven days before setting up a schedule that fits to our lifestyle over that last seven day period. It basically learns how you use your water, when, and then it will set up the schedule. So not only is it hot when you want it to be, but also it's used as little energy as needed. So hopefully saving you a bit of money as well. We've also got a timer. The timer function is so easy to use. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you look here, you can set up a plan and call it studio plan like I have here. And then it's just setting start times, end times, and what temperature you want it to be, just like you'd normally do with a standard central heating timer. You guys have gonna come across this many times before. If you can use a standard mobile phone, you'll be able to use this timer function too. You can also change the name of the immersion heater to relate to the property that you're in, which is really handy if you've got multiple immersion heaters on your phone. Once you've had a little play around with the app directly connected to the immersion heater itself, set up the immersion heater on the local Wi-Fi network by putting in the local network's name and password, and that's it, you're pretty much done. You'll be able to control this immersion heater from anywhere in the world where you've got an internet connection. So then guys, you've seen how easy it is to install. I mean, it takes seconds. You've seen how easy it is to set up on the app. It doesn't take long either. I'm now gonna go and shove one of these in my own home so I can monitor the hot water temperature and also so I can turn on and off my immersion heater without having to get up in the loft. Wicked. Right, here we are. 
up in my lovely loft. Need to redo the insulation a little bit. This is actually quite an old bashed up immersion here. It's gonna be really nice to be able to update this so we've got something that not only is the sort of lid just hanging off it a little bit, but it's gonna be able to talk to the Wi-Fi in the house and get everything working really well. So let's just do it, let's just get it in and done. So the first thing we do is, I mean, it's on at the moment. We've got the little LED light on there. We isolate that there. We pop the fuse out. I'll just leave the fuse set up here for a few minutes. That'll probably just disappear miraculously in the process of doing this. Now that I know that's off, I'll undo that. And just to make sure, just get my testers on there. So that's the old one out. I think we all know the process now, so it's pretty easy. Get the arrows to line up like that. This will pull off nice and carefully, don't pull too hard. Take the plug out of the back here pop this to one side, we undo the cap on here. Now I just want you to see, notice that this wire is free to move underneath this. It's not pinched against here. Okay, just wanna make sure you can see that because sometimes when you see something on camera, it doesn't sort of look quite right. Take our covering off. Always hold the wire just out the way, just pinch that with your finger and then pull that off. So just be particularly careful at this point, just to make sure that your tags go in properly on here. Make sure the wire is protected as we go back down. If you can do, it's a good idea to use crimps because you do get a much better electrical connection. So I've got this little crimp set here that's got loads of different sizes of crimps in here and a crimper as well that I use. I've used it in previous videos. The earth, what I tend to do is leave longer, the actual wire longer, then I'll wrap it a few times around the stud and then tighten that up. But now I hope you can already see the advantage of doing that. So hopefully you can see there why it's a lot better to use little crimps like that. Little tip for you on the earth is leave it long and then tighten it up and wrap the earth wire around in the direction you're gonna tighten it up in. Now we just rebuild the T-Smart like I've shown you in the studio before and that's it, we're all done. Pop the fuse back in, throw the switch. And we're alive. So now that it's on, I'm just gonna go back to my Wi-Fi, join the Tesla's little Wi-Fi network. I can change the set point so I can say, right, I want it hotter. And there we go, that's on now. It is so cool. And then also I can pop on here and change over the network and everything, change the password so it joins the local Wi-Fi. Seriously, I'm blown away by how good it is. So, so good. Because I want to use this as a backup like I normally would if the boiler goes wrong or for some reason like that, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave it on hand, but I'm gonna leave the set point 15 degrees so it's always frost protected now this system even if the heating goes off got a bit of frost protection there and now i can use this little number here as a monitor for this hot water tank from downstairs so i can sit downstairs and go oh we've got people coming over you know i can either whack the heating on by using the immersion or i can go into my other smart app and turn the heating on from there so how cool is that that's so cool so then guys, there's the T-Smart installed. I've now got control over everything on that. I could obviously use the interface here to run it, but what's the point when I've got such a great easy app to use? I can do it from there. I think it's really good. Those of you who are in the know will know what it's like if you've got a customer with Economy 7 or Economy 10. You used to have to fit those big controllers that I'm not gonna name names, aren't very good. Now you will not have to do that. You'll be able to use this here. You'll be able to use a T-Smart here to be able to do that, to set up the time so it coincides with their Economy 7 or Economy 10 times. It's gonna be a five-star review, I think. It's absolutely great. I, I, I really actually am very happy. Um, yeah, I'm so pleased to have it in here. I just wanna keep saying that. It's weird, isn't it? But I am really, really pleased with it. 